Hello and welcome to Midweek Connection today on Friday, March 24th, First Presbyterian Church. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we're going to do what we typically do, and that is read through our lectionary texts and talk about them and see how God might be calling us into greater faithfulness, which he does each and every day. Uh, but hopefully we'll have an opportunity to uh, see how these different texts connect with one another and uh, the challenges that we may, might face because of them and uh, ways that we might even encourage each other through them. So looking forward to this time. Let me open us in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we thank you so much for this day and the many blessings that you do provide. Lord, I pray that uh, as there are so many ways that uh, and directions that we might be called, I pray that we would stay focused on you and be obedient to what you call us to do. We thank you and praise you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to start with Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Many bulls encircle me. Strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It has melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd and my tongue sticks to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. For dogs are all around me, a company of evildoers encircles me. My hands and my feet have shriveled. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. But you, O Lord, do not be far away. O oh, my help, come quickly to my aid. Deliver my soul from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the mouth of the lion. From the horns of the wild oxen you have rescued me. I will tell of your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him, indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and shall live, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord, and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. In Psalm 148, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights, praise him all his angels, praise him all his host, praise him sun and moon, praise him all you shining stars, praise him you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds, which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind, fulfilling his command, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. 
He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him. Praise the Lord. Our Old Testament prophetic word today comes from Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 1 through 8. Woe to the shepherds who destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning the shepherds who scattered my people. Sorry, concerning the shepherds who shepherd my people. It is you who have scattered my flock and have driven them away, and you have not attended to them. So I will attend to you for your evil doings, says the Lord. Then I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the lands where I have driven them, and I will bring them back to their fold, and they shall be fruitful and multiply. I will raise up shepherds over them who will shepherd them, and they shall not fear any longer or be dismayed, nor shall any be missing, says the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Therefore, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when it shall no longer be said, as the Lord lives who brought the people Israel out of the land of Egypt, but as the Lord lives, who brought out and led the offspring of the house of Israel out to the land of the north and out of all the lands where he had driven them, then they shall live in their own land. We turn to the New Testament in Romans chapter 8, verses 28 through 39. We know that all things work together for good, for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own Son, but gave him up for all of us, Will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our gospel text today comes from John chapter 6, starting in verse 52 and going through verse 59. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. Back to our psalm, Psalm 105. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord in his strength, seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he has uttered. 
O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He is mindful of his covenant forever, of the word that he commanded for a thousand generations, the covenant that he made with Abraham, his sworn promise to Isaac, which he confirmed to Jacob as a statue to Israel as an everlasting covenant, saying, To you I will give the land of Canaan as your portion for an inheritance. When they were few in number, of little account, and strangers in it, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no one to oppress them. He rebuked kings on their account, saying, Do not touch my anointed ones. Do my prophets no harm. When he summoned famine against the land and broke every staff of bread, he had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. His feet were hurt with fetters, his neck was put in a collar of iron, until what he had said came to pass. The word of the Lord kept testing him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the people set him free. He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his possessions to instruct his officials at his pleasure and to teach his elders wisdom. Then Israel came to Egypt. Jacob lived as an alien in the land of Ham, and the Lord made his people very fruitful and made them stronger than their foes whose hearts he then turned to hate his people, to deal craftily with his servants. He sent his servant Moses and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They performed his signs among them and miracles in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made the land dark. They rebelled against his words. He turned their waters into blood and caused their fish to die. Their land swarmed with frogs, even in the chambers of their kings. He spoke, and there came swarms of flies and gnats throughout their country. He gave them hail for rain and lightning that flashed through their land. He struck their vines and fig trees and shattered the trees of their country. He spoke and the locusts came and the young locusts without number, they devoured all the vegetation in their land and ate up the fruit of their ground. He struck down all of the firstborn in their land, the first issue of all their strength. Then he brought Israel out with silver and gold and there was no one among their tribes who stumbled. Egypt was glad when they departed, for dread of them had fallen upon it. He spread a cloud for a covering and fire to give light by night. They asked, and he brought quails and gave them food from heaven in abundance. He opened the rock, and water gushed out. It flowed through the desert like a river, for he remembered his holy promise, and Abraham his servant. So he brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing. He gave them the lands of the nations, and they took possession of the wealth of the peoples, that they might keep his statutes and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. And our final psalm today is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, I do have to say I am on a little bit of a time crunch today and how much time we can spend. I know that uh, last couple of weeks we've had a couple lengthier a discussions. Um, and, and, and I wonder sometimes, Natalie, how we, uh, we get regularly accustomed to, to connecting all of these things together. And, and sometimes, you know, we're looking at something, we struggle about one of the things. Right. And, and, and I think that's okay. Um, and, and again, today being Friday, we're getting slightly different psalms than we're used mm -hmm. to because we usually do it on Wednesday, so we get some repetition on those things. Um, but I'll be honest, I'm, I'm having a little bit of struggle trying to figure out how exactly all of these connect together. Uh, looking at that Jeremiah passage, um, I think just uh, thinking about how God is going to... Um, restore the people of Israel and that whole that whole section um, talking about there's a difference between the shepherds who scatter and the shepherd that gathers and how Jeremiah is clearly speaking about the religious rulers of the time were not being right. 
um, uh, righteously effective. You know, they were doing their, you know, even their religious things, but were not, um, were not gathering the people to worship the Lord properly. Um, and, you know, Jeremiah is full of all of the uh, coming judgment and all those things because of their iniquity. But this whole idea that even in the midst of the scattering that will take place, that God is the one who, who will restore, um, even that verses uh, the seven through, um, was it just seven and eight anyway, it's no longer gonna be said, these are, you know, the Lord is the one who uh, drew us out of Egypt, but uh, the Lord brought us back out of the land essentially of exile. Right. And, um, and so there's, there's a different understanding between, as, as important as the Exodus was, there's something, um, you know, the Exodus was not really the people's fault. You know, they were in Egypt um, because, you know, Joseph had been sold there. There was a famine. They happened right. to go there. They settled there. They prospered there. And then they were oppressed there. And God set them free from their oppression. And as awesome and as important and as powerful that is, um, the exile was in response to their unfaithfulness. Right. And so if there was going to be continued judgment, uh, God would have been right and, and holy and just in doing that. Right. But again, this, this is where it shows that, that God's covenantal love with the people um, is, is bigger than, better than, uh, and, is, and, and God implements it in his timing. Um, it's superior to our sin. God's right. covenant righteousness, God's covenant faithfulness is right. bigger than our sin, and he will call us back out of exile. And I think that's just a, a huge important lesson that we should take uh, and, and see how these all fit in with it. But Right. No, I agree with you there. Um, as you were reading that, as you first started, um, uh, the first thing I thought, though, was like, wow, like this is, there is, also, there is an accountability. There is an accountability. There is judgment. There is... Um, there are repercussions to actions. There were then, there are now. And so it's, you know, woe to you who scatter my people because you are, you know, and it was, it was the leadership and it was, they have a role. And instead of bringing people in, inviting people in, you know, they're pushing and they're dividing people. And obviously that's a problem. Um, but then, like you said, then you get into that context of the exile. And, and in all of that though, it is, and we've said it many times, God is the primary actor. Mm -hmm. um, and so your, your leadership was messing up, but then even, even the people, they right, go, right. they're disobedient. But despite all of that, there is, there was exile, there was a consequence, but we are always invited back in. The invitation is open and that grace that's extended is mm -hmm. bigger than that disobedience. Right. Um, and so I think that's, yeah. So God brings uh, the righteous branch out of the line of David. Um, obviously, uh, we, we believe that to be Jesus. We believe he is the one who, who satisfies these prophecies ultimately. Um, and, and so jumping over to the Romans passage, just uh, to uh, think about it in terms of here is Paul who had been uh, you know, raised a Pharisee. He knew his scripture, obviously. He had originally been a persecutor of the church. Mm -hmm. Uh, has, a, has an encounter with Jesus. It changes his life, but uh, in the midst of that change, he is trying to explain then how faith in Christ works. And uh, with, all of these, um, with all of these passages that we read, you know, all of the letters that Paul wrote, um, including Romans, you know, Romans, as, as amazing as an awesome uh, treatise about the gospel is, it is still related to this idea of how can the people that are called uh, by the name of Jesus Christ, the people who are different from one another, uh, how do they continue to live life faithfully uh, together? And so um, starting off this thing, this, this whole of chapter eight, you know, if you, want, if you want to be encouraged about anything, right. go back and read the whole of chapter eight where uh, God is at work through the Holy Spirit in ways that we cannot be, ways that we cannot understand his intercession. Uh, and even Paul's 
uh, description about the sufferings of this. Uh, you know, I know we didn't read this particularly, right. but going back to, you know, go, go read it. Romans 8, uh, Romans uh, eight eighteen. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed to, this, uh, to us. In fact, all of creation is looking forward to the final consummation of the return of Christ. Um, but, but then, so that's the context in which Paul is writing all things. We know, we believe, we have faith that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And, and, and I struggle sometimes with this. I'm like, all, all, all things? things? <laughs> right. Because like, some things are really, some really things are unpleasant. Really hard. Some things are terrible. Right. Um, some things are tragic. Right. Uh, uh, brutal. How can that possibly be? And um, I am thinking about obviously my sermon coming up for Sunday and this whole idea of um, do you believe? You know, right. do you believe that Jesus works in the midst of the most painful things that we can experience? Uh, but because of uh, because Paul has great faith in Christ and Paul has himself experienced the life transformation of Christ. He can uh, remind his readers or encourage his readers that all of these things are being done according to God's purpose, for God's purpose, right. that we might be fully reconciled to him. And if we are going to be fully reconciled uh, to God, then why can we not figure out how to be reconciled to each other? Um, you know, like, man, God is for us. Right. And I think, and you look in the psalm stories, you know, and we hear this story, you know, of, um, you know, uh, Joseph being sold by his brothers. Like, you know, we think we have family problems. Like, seriously, they put him in a pit, debate about whether they should kill him. Oh, you know what? I have a better idea. Let's sell him. Right. Like, let's, make, let's at least make some money out of this. Let's sell him. And then we'll just tell daddy's dead, you know. And so they sell him. He's in prison. I mean, I don't, their prisons weren't like our prisons. And They didn't and, get three squares a day, right? No. They didn't have a gymnasium and, and television and, uh, and yet, wood shop. <laughs> right. But yet, in that, he worked that for good. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, I mean, the brothers and the dad, they, there is that reconciliation in the end. But he... He saved an entire country from mm. starving, and but he had to be in that prison to speak the words that he spoke in order for government to allow. You know, it's mm. God works all things. You know, you look at Jesus; he's beaten and hung on a cross. You know, as awful as all of those things are, he works all things for good. And and yes, things are tragic and things are awful, and it is so hard sometimes to see what good could possibly ever come out of this right. and um and that's why he's god and we're not and and i Praise and i don't Lord. think that we you know there are i think there are circumstances that we may never understand right. the good that is to come mm -hmm. but um but like you said we we believe and, and our faith is that god does all things for good his mm -hmm. character is that he does he mm -hmm. does work for our good he is not um, you know, he's not this puppet master in the sky trying to, you know, and so um, he does want good for us. Right. Just what what poetic language, uh, you know, sometimes I, you know, when, when you do a lot of writing, I mean, you know, you're like, man, why, <laughs> why my, stuff, I write like my that? stuff never lines up. Like, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Both hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it's written right. you're being killed all day long no in all yeah. things we are more than conquerors um yeah verse 38 for i am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of god christ jesus our lord and and if that is true which we believe it is though right. and and if that is true if nothing can separate us from the love of god why do we let small things or sometimes even big things separate us from one another. One another. Um, 
or take? Why do we let those little things get in the way and distract us? Yeah. Why does that keep us, you know, that love? You know, nothing can separate us from the love of God because He is always here. He is always present. When we feel that separation, when we feel that distance, that's not Him pulling back. Yeah, right. That's us right. pulling back or just doing a complete 180. Um, it's there. It's always there. Um, even when it is difficult to see, it is always right. there. Um Right, and so if we jump back to the gospel message, uh, you know, it's it's this whole, um, you know, Jesus feeding the 5,000, and then Jesus teaches about the bread and how everyone was so fascinated that Jesus, and, and, uh, and rightly impressed that Jesus had created food essentially from nothing, right. multiplied it so that everybody can eat, and and then he turns it around and says, yeah, you've... I'm the true bread. Right. You have to come eat me, drink my blood, eat my body, um, because I'm greater than that which came down from heaven. He's referring, obviously, to the man mm -hmm. in the wilderness. Um, I'm greater than that because your ancestors ate it and they died. If right. you eat me, you will live forever. Uh, well, the man I met a physical need. Right. He meets that spiritual right. need in a way that nothing physical can. That's not a place that physical can fill. Right. right. And so, um, you know, that's he, he's it. There's mm. there's nothing else that's going to fill that void or fill that need. Right. And so. Right. Well, like you know, like Paul was saying, you know, these things, all these things, you know, nakedness and peril and sword and all these things, they can't separate you from God's love, but it doesn't mean they don't still exist. Right. Like we can experience those difficulties. We can experience those persecutions. But again, that uh, the spiritual life that God brings through his son, Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, that just, it has to be it. Because even the ancestors who ate the bread in the wilderness, they still died. They didn't have that which was fully necessary for their right. uh, for eternity. Um, you know, we do believe that God existed back in, you know, obviously God's spirit was present and God could right. bring people into eternal life and things. But how much, how much more should we be aware of God's love for us? Uh, because we have experienced the transformation that comes through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Um, right. Yeah. We could probably talk on this for a lot longer, but again, we, we, have, to, we have to close it down a little early. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks for joining yeah. us today. And uh, we do look forward to continuing to do this. I'm going to try to see if I can convince Natalie to do during Holy Week, you know, kind of a daily mid, okay. maybe, you know, maybe, yeah. you know, midday connection. Yeah. Uh, we'll see if we can do that. Can maybe maybe, maybe that we'll off. get maybe we'll get uh, uh, David Welch in here, maybe a guest, you know, super special guest star or something like that. But um, I just think God's word is so hugely important to all of us, um, and we should all be in. All should, all be reading it regularly right. uh, so that we can be transformed. But thanks for joining us today. And thank you again, Natalie, for reading. Yeah. You, had, you had the long, long songs. Uh, they yes. want to find us. Yeah, yours, <laughs> you started out. Now, Psalm 22 is long also. But um, thanks for reading well. Yes. Would you like to close us in prayer? I'd be happy Great, to. Great, thank you. All right. Gracious and loving Father, um, thank you for your words for us today. And um, thank you for, um, thank you for working all things for good. Thank you for being a God that that does love us and that does want uh, what is best for us. And help us in those moments and those trials and those tribulations and, and those tough times when we are going through um, things that, that it's so difficult to see what good could possibly come out of that. Just be with us in the midst of those things. Help us to see you with us in the midst of those things. We know that you're always there and that there is nothing that can separate us from your love and it is offered freely. And um, we just thank you for that. And help us to, to love you and to, to extend that love to those around us so that we can um, love those around us better as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks again. Look forward to seeing you guys soon. Bye-bye.